Okay, good day everyone. Welcome to the Canadian Math Kangaroo Contest Lessons. Today we will concentrate on geometry, uh, especially for students in grades 1 and 2. Okay, so exactly what is geometry? Well, geometry is a branch of mathematics that studies the sizes, shapes, angles, positions, and dimensions of objects. Okay, let, now let's look at some examples and we begin with question one. Okay, Rebecca marked a point on a piece of paper. She now draws four non-overlapping straight lines that pass through this point. Into how many sections do these lines divide the paper? Okay, so we know that there is a point on a piece of paper and now we're going to draw four lines that pass through the point and do not overlap each other. So here's our first line, our second line, our third line, and finally our fourth line. Now let us see how many sections do these four lines divide the paper into. Okay, here's our first section, our second section, our third section, here's section number four, section number five, section number six, section number seven, and finally section number eight. Eight. So we know that these four lines have divided the paper into eight sections. Okay, here's our second example. The number 930 is displayed on a square grid of lights. White squares represent lights that are on and dark squares represent lights that are off. How many lights must be switched in order to obtain the number 806 from the grid that shows 930. Okay, so we want to change this number 930 into 806 by switching on or off some of the lights on the display here. Okay, now let's look at the first digit. How do we turn this 9 into 8? Well, we can do that by switching off this light over here. Now, how do we turn this tree into zero? We can do that by turning off these two lights and turning on this light. And finally, how do we turn this zero into a six? Well, by turning on this light and turning off this light. Now, let's see how many lights have we turned on or off in this process. Okay, here we are. So we have turned this light off, this light off, this light off, this light on, this light on, and this light off. And we can see that all together we have either turned on or off six lights. Okay, here's example number three, question three. This picture represents a maze and the position of a cat, a mouse, a box of milk and a piece of cheese in it. The central part of the maze is missing. Which one of these five tiles should be placed in the center so that the cat can never reach the mouse, but the cat can reach the milk and the mouse can reach the cheese? We'll do this through a process of elimination. That is, we'll place these five tiles into the center of the maze one by one to see which one works. Okay, let's try. The first tile. We we'll place the first tile in the center of the maze. And when this is done, notice that the mouse can reach the milk. The cat is not able to go anywhere. Now, this is not what we want. So, clearly, the first tile is not what we are looking for. Let's try the second tile. So, when we place the second tile in the center of the maze, notice that the mouse is not able to go anywhere. The cat is able to reach the milk and the cat is able to reach the cheese. Now, this is not what we want. So, therefore, the second tile is also not what we're looking for. Now, let's try the third tile. So, when the third tile is placed in the center of the maze, notice that the cat is now able to reach the mouse. Now, we do not want the mouse to be eaten by the cat, do we? So obviously, 
the third tile is also not what we are looking for. Now let's try the fourth tile. So when the fourth tile is placed in the center of the maze, now notice that the cat is still able to reach the mouse and this is not what we want. So the fourth tile is also not what we are looking for. Now let's try the fifth tile. So when the fifth tile is placed in the center of the maze, now, now the cat is able to reach the milk and the cat is able to reach the cheese. So this is the tile that we are looking for. And therefore, our answer is E. Okay, here's question four. Six coins are arranged in a triangular pattern, as shown on the picture on the left. You have to move some of these coins to rearrange them in a circular pattern, as you can see on the picture on the right. At least how many coins must be moved? Okay, so let's take a look at these six coins at the left. Now, notice that this coin corresponds to this coin. This coin here corresponds to this coin. This coin corresponds to this coin. And this coin corresponds to this coin. So it appears we need to move at least this coin and this coin to obtain a circular pattern. Right, so let's move this coin over here and move this coin over here. And you can see that by moving at least these two coins, we have obtained the circular pattern similar to that at the left. So therefore, our answer to this question is we must move at least two coins. Okay, here is question five. Now, Kanga wants to renovate the floor of a kitchen. She only has the type of tiles shown on the right. Hence, she cannot arrange one of the patterns below. Which one? Now, notice that the tile that Kanga has has a line going from one corner to the opposite corner. So through a process of elimination, we'll see which of these patterns cannot be obtained by Kanga. Okay, let's take a look at the first pattern here. Okay, notice that the first section has a line going from one corner to the opposite corner. And this fits exactly with the pattern that Kanga has. And we notice also that the second section, the third section, and the fourth section will all be obtainable by using Kanga's tile. So therefore, the first pattern is obtainable by Kanga, and therefore it is not the answer we're looking for. Remember, the question wants us to find which pattern cannot be arranged using the tiles that Kanga has. Now let's try the second pattern. Okay, in the second pattern, notice that the first section also has a line going from one corner to the opposite corner, which again fits the tile that Kanga has. And we notice that the second section, the third section, and the fourth section also will fit the tile that Kanga has. And so therefore, this pattern can be obtained by Kanga and it's not the answer that we're looking for. So let's look, take a look at the third pattern here. Now in the third pattern, in the first section, notice that we have a line going from one corner to the opposite corner, which fits the tile that Kang has. And we look at the second section, the third section, and the fourth section, they all fit the tile that Kang has. And so therefore this pattern is obtainable by Kang and is not the answer that we're looking for. Let's take a look at the fourth pattern here. So in the fourth pattern, in the first section, we have a line going from one edge to the opposite edge. Now this does not fit the tile that Kanga has. Right. The second section, 
the third section and the fourth section also do not fit the tile that Kanga has. And so therefore, this is the pattern that cannot be obtained by Kanga and is the answer that we're looking for. Now, just for argument's sake, let's take a look at the fifth pattern here. So in the fifth pattern, okay, the first section has a line going from one corner to the opposite corner, which fits the tile that Kanga has. So does the second section, so does the third section, and so does the fourth section. So this pattern is obtainable by Kanga using the tiles, tiles that she has. And so therefore, this fifth pattern is obtainable by Kanga and is not the answer to the question. So through a process of elimination, we notice that it's the fourth pattern that is not obtainable by Kanga and is therefore the answer that we are looking for. Okay, so this is the end of our lesson. Thank you so very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please refer to the website mathkangaroo.ca or please send an email to info at mathkangaroocanada.com. Okay, thank you very much once again and have yourself a fabulous day.